Hi all, it's Megan. Uh, today I am going to be unpacking a third grade math standard. So um, it's the Common Core Standard 3.OA.B.5, um, which is in the um, overall domain of operations and algebraic thinking for grade three. Um, so co-teaching math is my very favorite job I've ever had, and I really hope to eventually be a math specialist, which is why I decided to do a math standard. Um, and I chose grade three because even though my last job was seventh grade, I'm really hoping to make the move to elementary. So um, the standard that I'm going to get into is um, apply the properties of operations as strategies to multiply and divide. It goes further into detail to say, specifically, we want students to understand the commutative, associative, and distributive properties of multiplication and how we can use those to solve both multiplication and division problems. So our operative word here or verb is apply. We want students to be able to recognize when it's appropriate to use each strategy and actually employ them, as opposed to it being a standard, um, for example, it could be identify the properties of multiplication, uh, but it's not. We specifically want them to be able to apply those properties. And so in order to have mastered the standard, my students are going to need to understand the commutative property, which is to say that 4 times 6 is equal to 6 times 4. And so when you're in the third grade, that means that if you know and you have already memorized 4 times 6, you don't have to spend any time working on 6 times 4. Uh, they also need to understand the associative property, which is to say that 3 times 5 times 2 can be found by taking 3 times 5 is 15, times 2 is 30. Or you could group it another way and say 5 times 2 is 10, and 10 times 3 is also 30. So understanding that we can group our factors together in any way that we want and still get the same answer. Uh, and lastly, the distributive property. So this one's kind of the hardest to explain out loud, but um, it's knowing that 8 times 5 equals 40 and 8 times 2 equals 16. So if you know that, then you can find 8 times 7 by saying that 8 times the quantity, so in parentheses, 5 plus 2 is equal to 8 times 5 plus 8 times 2, which means you have 40, that original problem you already knew, plus 16, another multiplication problem you already knew, equals 56, and 8 times 7 is 56. Uh, so in order to help my students master this standard, I've come up with a few projects. So the first one I want to talk about to learn the associative property is um, a project that I found where students use those little um, elbow macaroni noodles that sort of look like parentheses. They use it to represent parentheses in their practice problems and practice grouping things in different ways and showing that they are still equal. Um, I really like this because it is helpful to kinesthetic learners and also gives that like visual representation for my visual learners. And of course, I mean, my um, auditory learners are like everything is geared towards them because I'm always talking or they're talking to each other, or, you know, so everything we go over is always connecting to those auditory learners as well. Um, to review all these properties, uh, I'm going to have students cut out, well, I'm going to individually cut out um, a bunch of example problems and examples of each of the three properties. And I'm going to give a set to pairs of students. So everyone's going to have a partner. They're going to take those and sort them by property so I'm not telling them this is an associative property problem. They have to decide which property is being represented in this example. And then they're going to sort them onto a large poster with three sections. Um, and then obviously they're going to talk together and talk through their rationale for why they're putting them in each section. After that, I'm going to have them do a gallery walk slash like dissertation defense. Um, so one partner is going to sit with the poster in like a spot around the room. The other partner is going to walk around to other students or other groups work. And they're going to look around and see if they find anything that they don't agree with. 
And so if they come across something they don't agree with, they're going to ask the person whose work it is to explain why they grouped it in the group that they did. And then the two of them will discuss back and forth, oh, well, my group put it here and this is why we put it here and sort of hopefully work through um, any misconceptions or errors, either on the poster or errors in thinking from the student who's um, doing like the challenging of the work. Um, so halfway through then they will switch and the other partner will go ahead and defend their work and the other partner, the partner that was defending will move on and go through and challenge other people and look through the other group's posters. Uh, prior to starting this, we'll go over accountable talk and how to present um, or challenge an idea in a way that's respectful and kind of to everyone's feelings. Um, I'll have them keep in mind that this is about keeping an open mind and about learning new things and eventually getting the right answer, not about like defending to the death what work you put out. Um, but also that it is okay to stand up for your answer because I find kids are super willing to just be like, oh, well, I guess I must be wrong. If somebody else thinks something else, then I must be the one that's wrong. And I really want to empower students to stand up for themselves and say like, this is what I was thinking. Let's talk through it and see who has the right answer. Um, so in order to assess their mastery of this standard, um, our summative is actually district wide. Uh, I don't know if that'll be true in my next district, but I've come from a district where math summatives for each unit are decided on a district level. Uh, but for formative assessments, one thing I plan to employ is um, a running record, which basically you, during the unit, um, you spend a few minutes, like a quick minute conferencing with individual students ask them a couple quick questions to gauge their understanding and keep track of it in like a running log of which ones they got right and which ones they still need to work on. Um, I like this because it's like one quick checklist where I could like easily see wh which students have mastered which of the properties. Um, and I don't have to just use the conferencing part of it. I can also use like poll questions and jot down um, data from the poll questions. Um, and employ something that I saw a few units back, which is in order to dismiss students to go like either to a new thing or to the bathroom or to the hallway or to get a drink, you ask them a trivia question. And so I can also just like quickly ask that question, mark it off and track data as we go. So that is Common Core Standard 3.0a.b.5 or .5. Thanks.